In 1990, the year I graduated from high school, a long time ago, the Voyager 1 spacecraft finished its tour of our solar system and then headed for interstellar space. Carl Sagan, a physicist who worked on the project, convinced NASA to turn the camera of Voyager toward Earth and take a picture and send it back to us. And that picture is, was and is the furthest picture ever taken of our planet, which appears as a tiny little pale blue dot, about one and a half pixels large. That photo, which usually inspires awe in people, actually made me angry and sad when I saw it. The image of our planet as this minuscule dot in space, in the vastness of the solar system, made all the wars that we fought seem meaningless, and the suffering that they caused completely unnecessary. But, in addition, after the anger and the sadness, I actually felt hope, because I wanted to make things better. And I wanted my tiny life on that tiny planet to have some meaning to it, and I wanted to make a difference. My work at the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, my job was to help conduct the trials of senior military and political leaders who were accused of the most horrendous crimes one can imagine. And I would sit in the courtroom with hundreds of witnesses and listen to their stories and, um, you know, just entire families and communities just wiped out. Hundreds of thousands of people forcibly displaced from their homes. And I went on a site visit to the region where these crimes were committed, I went to detention centers where people were raped and tortured and killed in, in ways that you could not possibly imagine. You couldn't imagine it. And then I went to the mass graves where they were buried. I went to a minefield where the prisoners of war were forced to walk across the field to detonate the mines with their bodies. And this not only cleared the field, but it also allowed the perpetrators to um, get rid of the prisoners of war without expending precious ammunition to shoot and kill them. And uh, I visited a hospital where during the uh, armed conflict it had the, the huge red and white red cross painted on the, um, on the roof in order to prevent it from being targeted. It's a hospital. It's a universally accepted place of refuge. And during the armed conflict, the, uh, the, the wounded, including children, who were there to be treated, had to take refuge in the basement because the hospital was being shelled. Now, these trials that are conducted in The Hague and elsewhere, they're vitally important for a number of reasons. Um, they, can, they can bring some catharsis to the victims. The findings at the end of the trial, detailing uh, autopsy reports and DNA analyses uh, of the murder victims, can bring some closure to families who have lost loved ones and would like to know what finally happened to them. And bringing perpetrators to justice does advance the rule of law. However, after having done this for a number of years, I started to perceive the limitations of international criminal justice. No verdict in any trial can bring back a mother or a father from the dead. And the damage, it's difficult to repair and sometimes impossible. 
In addition, I felt to feel frustrated and I wanted to perhaps try in a small way to prevent people from becoming victims before it happened, to prevent the harm and not just deal with the aftermath. And this is where the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons comes into the picture, OPCW. The mandate of OPCW, put simply, is to prevent harm from happening before it happens. Uh, we aim to verifiably destroy an entire category of weapons of mass destruction and to make sure they never come back. I'll give you an example of this. In the summer of 2016, the remnants of uh, the chemical weapon agents that had been left over from the now defunct Gaddafi regime were sitting in the middle of the Libyan desert. And there were, cons there were real secur security concerns that they were going to fall into the hands of non-state actors and be used to harm innocent people. So the international community got together and organized a multinational operation to get rid of those uh, chemical weapon agents, to move them out of Libya and to destroy them. This happened um, in fairly rapid succession in the summer of 2019, whereby the chemical weapons were shipped from the middle of the desert through potentially hostile territory to a port on the Mediterranean Sea. They were loaded onto a ship and transported under military escort through the Straits of Gibraltar and then the North Sea to a port in Germany, offloaded, transported to a destruction facility uh, where they are currently being destroyed as we sit here in an environmentally sound manner. That sounds pretty smooth, <laughs> but it was a lot more complicated than that. And there were so many legal and logistical and financial difficulties that we had to overcome. And every time that we hit an obstacle, we, we met the challenge head on, we worked the problem, and we found a solution, and we made it happen, and just our motto was failure was not an option, and we are gonna make this happen. So it was an example of how international institutions and partnerships can work to deliver a uh, a real and measurable security benefit for the Libyan people, for the neighbors of the Libyans, and ultimately for all of us. Those chemical weapon agents will never be turned into weapons, and they will never be used to harm anyone. There are a lot of dangers out there that need to be prevented, and and I think that people need to rise to the challenge and uh, try to prevent those dangers. One of my favorite sayings goes something like this. I'll paraphrase it. Pessimists complain about the wind. Optimists, they expect the wind is going to change. And realists adjust the sails. So the question I would like to leave you with today is as follows. When we think about the victims of armed conflict across the world, are you going to complain about it? Are you going to expect it to change? Or are you going to adjust your sails and try to make a difference? Thank you.